Hello, Internet. Welcome to the first episode of Sidereal Midnight Plays Invisible Ink with the new Contingency Plan DLC. Now, I'm calling this the first episode. It's technically the second episode. Why is that, you may ask? Because there is a recording that will now be lost to time for all eternity in which... I did the very first run of this. Yeah, my mic audio was muted through the entire second half of the recording, so I had to scrap it. But, I learned a lot from that run. Mostly, how not to die on the first mission, which is what happened. And I will bring that forward into the actual Let's Play and hopefully live through the first mission this time. Now, uh, what is Invisible Ink? Invisible Ink is another tactical squad based game like XCOM and I can now say Shadowrun because it's up on the channel. And, uh, just gotta stretch there a bit. Where Shadowrun is more about the firefight with all the magic and bullets and flying around and looking for cover, Invisible Ink is about stealth. About getting in, stealing everything that isn't nailed down, and getting out before you're caught and murdered. There's a lot of things about this game that are going to be somewhat difficult to, to explain until we actually get into it, so I'll save it for then. But one thing I want to say is that I'm very happy to be playing this game now. I was going to play it on this channel three months ago, but my computer took a bit longer to build than I thought. I was so glad to see the uh, Contingency Plan DLC come out today, so that I could record a few episodes of it now and actually put it up on the channel months after I wanted to. So we're going to start a new game and we're going to play the story. The tutorial A is pretty simple and B doesn't teach all that much. And what I want is to put this on Iron Man. This time we're hopefully not going to die on the first mission, so not having rewinds which allow you to turn back time to the beginning of your previous turn will hopefully not be an issue. And then I'm going to show the settings for a moment, just to show what Contingency Plan added. It added an extended campaign with an additional 48 hours, um, extra agents, which we're not going to be playing to start, but will hopefully play over the course of the series. Extra programs. I haven't seen most of these. I've seen Burst and Golem on the first mission. I'll explain what those are about. More enemy types. No idea what these are. More daemons. I don't know what daemons are, but apparently they added a lot more of them. New side missions and more endless content, which we probably will not touch. And then here are the other settings. Campaign is 72 hours. Mission starting power is 10. Alarm stages are normal, I'll get into what that means later. Credits, multiplier, guards per level, that's all normal. Everything is normal, everything is default, I'm not going to change any of this. And just wanted to show you what we were working with there. And there are going to be no level retries because as, as an XCOM player I can't bring myself to not Iron Man. If I die a few more times on the especially on the first mission. We'll get some rewinds in there. But for now, let's start the game. Get to the main server, collect the data, and get out. No detours. Copy that, Central. Proceeding to target. Oh. <laughs> Insertion was clean. Alarm level holding steady. We need to get to the third floor. We can make our way to the server room from there. Any chatter on the comms? Negative. It's silent on all frequencies. They should have detected us by now. Receiving priority one transmission. 
They're on to you. Get out. Get out of there! HQ compromised. We're going to need an extraction. I've got incognito. Deckard and International are on their way. Get to the roof. I'll cover you. Go! Decker, how long till extraction? 30 seconds. Get us out of here. We've got work to do. All right, and that is the intro cinematic. Now, these four characters, as we have to understand, are new to the DLC. I may touch them later if I die with these two characters further into the main campaign than literally the first mission. But I will be using one of the new programs, which is Burst. And what Burst does is it gives you three power and three action points. So I'll explain what that means later, but you lose three action points while it's on cooldown. The other program that you get to start with is Golem. And as I learned, this is not a this is not an early game program. It breaks two firewalls and almost everything in the game to start only has one level of firewall. So, we're not going to be using this. If we get it later, awesome. Not using it to start. No idea what any of these are. We're going to be using the only other available one, which is Lockpick. And I'm fine with that. Now, International, they both have these tasers, which are used to knock out guards. Then, they also have... International has a wireless emitter. Her skin is an antenna. International is able to manipulate electronics. I mean, I'm guessing that's why she has this really nifty headset. And she can hack items from a distance, which is really useful, I found out on that mission. That, and especially revealing nearby mainframe objects. That's real good. Now, Decker can apparently uncover daemons and adjacent objects. I don't know what daemons are. I'm hoping that's good. And he also has the taser, and he can also become invisible, which I just realized now I forgot about entirely last mission, and it has an eight-turn cooldown. Ah, uh, that would have been super useful. Oh, well. And then their lore... Decker affects a persona from a bygone era as an act of protest against a world gone mad from for technology. Quick on his feet and with his fists, rumor has it that he's packing more augmentations than he's willing to admit. He was the chief of security for Kano's California branch until an escalating love affair with the bottle chased him out of the corporate world. So he's basically a noir detective in the late 21st century. Also, I'm going to be calling him Trenchcoat all the time, but when you see his model, you are going to have a hard time blaming me. And then there's Maria Internacional Valdez, an ex-airborne scout in the Free Cuban Army. Valdez went underground after the re-annexation of Havana. Several years of freelance action against corporate interests led to a considerable bounty on her head, and she joined an Invisible for the chance to pay it off. Her tactical prowess is legendary, but her conscience can be a liability on and off the field. 
I'm not sure if this comes into play later, like if there's bottles around and he has to drink them and lose AP or something, or like if you murder somebody, if murder is even possible in this game. She, International like gets mad and has the potential to leave. I'm not sure if these bios mean anything, I'm just reading them out. And, oh yes, yeah, so and then there's stats. Speed is the amount of AP action points which are used for movement and literally everything else, or most other things that your characters have. Everybody starts with 8 with their baseline speed. Decker, because he has 1 additional speed, starts with 9. Hacking boosts the power gain from hack consoles, so everybody normally gets the regular amount. International gets 1 additional because her hacking is better. Strength increases the number of items the agent can carry without being slowed and improves drag speed. I've never dragged anything, and I don't know how it improves it, so I'm probably not going to touch this for a while. And Anarchy allows for better stealing. Like, you can knock guards unconscious and steal from them. Anarchy makes your stealing better. At least, that's how I understand it. Now... We're going to start and get some nice voice acting, because as far as I can tell, the voice acting in this game is really solid. So we will begin with this team and this loadout. Time to play some Invisible Ink. It's 2074, and corporations rule the world with brutal efficiency. They hit you hard, and now you're on the run. You need to strike back, but you'll never win by force. Keep your agents alive with stealth and cunning. Raid the Corps' facilities for tools and support, and prepare your team for the final showdown. The odds are stacked against you. You will fail, repeatedly. Oh, believe me, game, I am aware of that. But each time, you will learn more about your adversaries, and every restart generates a new world of dangers and opportunities. You have a tough job ahead of you, oper operator. Don't let us down. This, reading this reminds me of one thing I forgot to mention about this game. This is a procedurally generated stealth game. So, the level layout is always different, and the enemies in that level are always different. As well as the loot and the door placement and all the other stuff. So you're never getting the exact same run twice. I'm interested to find out how much of the first mission is different. Hopefully, it will make it easier for me to live. Operator, are you there? Good. I was afraid you didn't make it out. Headquarters is gone. Most of our agents have been captured or killed, and our accounts all frozen. I don't know how the corporations found us, but you can bet they won't give up now that they've had a taste of blood. The Jets' stealth rig should keep us hidden if we keep moving, but Incognita can't survive long on backup power. She's got 72 hours tops. We need to mount a counterattack before then, or we'll be defenseless against their scans. If that happens, we may as well just crash this thing into the ocean. You've never seen the inside of a corporate deprogramming chamber. I won't see the inside of another. Incognita is scanning for targets of opportunity where we can replenish our supplies. Follow her leads and gather what resources you can. I'll run through our contacts and see what favors I can call in. We're going to need all of the advantages we can find in the coming days. Okay, I, I understand that this is blinking and it's got to be annoying, but I want to point out that underneath Central's portrait, there's hello extra text here. I love that that's just there, that that's never been changed. I'll, I'll stop making that be annoying for a moment. Yeah, and Central is essentially our uh, MI6 director a la James Bond, as far as I can tell. There's the starting loadout, and this is us. Oh, the location we go to is different. Last time, the first mission was over here in, like, the east coast of America. And then, this is essentially our time limit. Wherever we travel somewhere, it takes X amount of hours. Oh, and the company is different, too. It was, like... FMB or something previously. Yeah, and then we have credits, which 
can apparently be used to buy stuff in the level. I don't know what they can be used for outside of the level, but they can definitely be used to buy stuff inside the level. And then I'll just go Executives to this. Executives are notoriously slack when it comes to network security, and their terminals are full of interesting information. We found a lightly guarded executive complex here. Get in, find the computer, and steal their contact list. Then we'll have our pick of future targets. Okay. Yeah, so this is the same. The objective is the same. I'm guessing this this mission is, like, mandatory. So it'll, I'm assuming, give us more points on the map. And, yeah, this, uh, this core is different. Okay, so... Kill Freed and Odin Weapons Foundry. Free from government regulation, k has the most advanced weaponry and automated defense of all the corporations. Hmm. I'm guessing they have sentry turrets or something? Because I saw literally none of those in the last run. And then, this, I imagine, is the lowest level. And then I can get more info. This facility holds the location of future targets of value. Each mission type provides key benefits to your agents, and while new locations will be presented to you over time, successful infiltration here will speed up the process and give you more targets of your choosing. Yeah, so my guess is it improves map data. Hopefully, we'll actually see what it does. Yeah, and that's the voice of Incognita, our jet board AI. We'll be seeing more of her as we teleport in here. They caught us completely by surprise, so we have no firepower with us. The guards' weapons are gene coded to their owner and useless to us. We're going to have to make do with what we can find along the way. We've beamed you through the security grid. You should be somewhere near the target, but you'll need to look for it. Get the list and find a transport pad to escape. But be quick about it. They noticed a disturbance when we ported in and their alarm level is already rising. I wonder if she voice acts for every mission. I feel like that would be hard in a procedurally generated game, but I would love to see it. Yep. Fine. Yeah, our secondary objective is get money and get paid, and then our primary objective is locate the executive terminals and live. I will try my hardest to stay alive. Now, this is the other thing that makes this game really interesting, this uh, security level here. Every turn, regardless of what happens, this ticks up. And whenever it gets all the way around the circle, something bad happens. I got up to level four i'm not sure what the max level is but level four sucked there were six guards and a bunch of angry cameras so i'm hoping that this time we're in and out before we reach that level now one thing i've noticed is that it seems to be really good to split up just because you need to find the exit as soon as humanly possible. Oh my god. Did we already find the uh, the thing we needed to find? I really hope that's true. Yeah, and then... As far as I know, the blue actions... Like this peak here... Actually cost 1 AP. It costs 1 AP move from one square to the next... Unless it's diagonal, in which case it costs two. And the green actions are free. Like, I can open and close this door for free, but I'm going to peek through it first. So that I don't alert this guard. Yeah, I think this is what we need to... We need to get. So that's actually really good. And then, yeah, this... This eyeball allows me to basically see this guy's AI path. So I can maybe get around it. I'm going to slide the mic back here a bit. But at the cost of 1 AP. I'm going to do that. Okay, he's leaving the room. I don't want to enter just in case the noise alerts him. I'm not sure if that's how that works. But what I will do is 
press space and enter incognito mode. Yeah, this is the hacking mode of the game, where you use... I'm gonna call these icebreakers, because Neuromancer and Netrunner compel me to. You use icebreakers to break these firewalls. This one only breaks one firewall, so if this was two, I would need to use it twice. This cost over here is how much power it costs to use, and this up here is how much power we have. And down there is Incognita. Hi, Incognita. Hi. Alright, so I'm gonna hack this. Because International can, like, see through walls or something. And then... I'm gonna use trench coat here to find the exit. Oh, wait. There are no doors anywhere, so... It's either here or bust. Alright, so International... Move to the side. All right, I keep forgetting I need to right-click move. The executive terminal is the large device with the simplified controls. There. Oh, wow. It really is right there. Like, just to, uh, just to give you some idea of why I'm surprised, it took me 20 minutes to find this thing last time. And by the time I did... I had pretty much already lost. This is going to be a huge help. Alright, I'm gonna hide him behind it and also take this. I love that. He just, like, he pulls a laptop out of his trench coat. Like, can you see why I call this man trench coat? Is there really any other thing to call him? They noticed you poking about and have changed up their patrols. Be careful on your way out. Oh, God. Oh well, hopefully he doesn't patrol to right where I'm standing. And I will end the turn because I am out of AP. Yep, see? It went up one pip. And now it's talking about that. I already explained the game, you don't need to. Don't worry about it. Now we need to find the exit. Which is some weird, like elevator pad with a bunch of circles on it that teleports me to freedom. Okay, so Ogden Trenchcoat here can run over there, somehow not alerting the guard, and peek. I'm gonna put him on ambush, which for those who played XCOM is sort of a melee overwatch. Like, the second he comes through this door, he will get tased. Oh, I want to hack that. As far as I can tell, the power supply is connected to one of the other things on this floor, which which I can use to disable or enable that thing. I want that on for now so that they don't they don't go, "Hey, this laser grid is off for some reason. That's suspicious." Uh, did I forget to close the door? I did. This is a very line-of-sight based game, and also if they notice the door magically opened by itself, the guards will be like, what was that? Or, did you see that? Alright. Seems like there are a lot of guards on that side of the door. Nope, I don't want you, International. I want, I want Ogden here. All right, this seems to be free from all sides. Oh no, it's a million open doors. Okay, let's find out which door they went in. That tells me nothing. Is this just a blank? Nope, this is not just a blank room. There is something in here. I'm gonna go to International. You can take any number of AP turns at the same time, so that's really useful. And I'm gonna get her up here, see if her uh, wireless transmitter triggers. And then... I'm really worried because if a guard comes in, I could just be absolutely wrecked right now. 
So hopefully they don't come in. Haha. -ha. Let me just move him up one space. And then I can have him peek around corners. I'm gonna have him close the door so he doesn't decide to peek around that corner. Okay, there's a guard in there. There's at least one guard in there. And apparently nothing else of value. I don't think he can get past this laser gate, but he might be able to, so I'm going to observe him. Okay, he's going to a completely different area. That's great for me. In that case, I will end my turn. Alright. Let's move one space over. I'm gonna go over here. I don't think they'll willingly go through the locked doors. Because it'll open them up for unsavory. Oh, there's the exit. So, if I wanted to, I could just leave right now. This is so much easier than the last version of this. You have no idea. But instead, I'm going to try and steal some stuff. Because our sec the security level's at zero. I'm not too, too worried yet. What is that? That's a nano fabricator. I've never used that before in my life. I'm gonna move her over there and set her on ambush in case there's any guards that want to come looking. And I'll leave him by the exit. Alright. It doesn't even look like she heard guards over here. So what I will do is temporarily deactivate this laser grid. For starters. Let me rotate this camera. That's what I need. Okay, so this seems to be covered from all ends. Not exactly sure how that works. He's lying against a two-dimensional surface, but... You do you, man. You do you. And let's... Set him up to ambush, just in case I need him to. Go back to the other view. Go to incognito mode, have her hack the nano fabricator. And, okay, for starters, let me, how do I rotate the camera? Okay. Okay, so she is right up against the wall, so hopefully when I tell her to peek around this corner, she will do it. Good, excellent. So there's a doorway over there. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move her, I'm gonna close this door, and then I'm gonna move her over here. Because now that I've hacked this, I can come back and do stuff with it whenever I want. It'll never become unhacked. And how do I rotate it back? Q. Whereas, who knows what could be in here? Oh. Okay. Thanks, Incognita. Yeah, so now a whole bunch of security cameras that didn't exist before are going to activate. Also, there's something in there that's watching. I should be able to peek through the door and see what it is. Ah, it's a camera. And that is a console with power in it. I don't know why the consoles have power in it. Don't ask me. Probably science reasons. Okay, so cred chips are are free. Cred chips, you can just take those and they'll go in your inventory and nothing bad will happen to you. That, uh, that pass card, on the other hand, that takes up an inventory slot. So if I want to get it, I need to get international over here. Hmm. So for starters, I'm going to 
lockpick this camera and this camera because it's guarding the exit and I don't want to deal with it. Let's see. How far can I drag him? Aw, oh, man. I wanted to drag him into... I'm just going to drag him around with me. He's going to be my new buddy. We're just going to go and get this power eventually. Because honestly, there's nowhere else I need him to be right now. International is the one who's doing all the movement. Let's move you up there. Peek through the door. Oh, that's a lot of security cameras that are about to become active. I can hack one of them. And I can hack the next one next turn. So I will just end my turn for now. Because what I can do is I can... I'm going to drop him in here. Actually, I kind of want to drag him somewhere else. But at the same time, I don't care that much. So I'm going to move him. Oh, I can't because I'm holding this body. I will hijack that power. And now I have all this movement to play with. So I can move out. Close this door. Leave him to sleep for a few turns. And head towards this door on the far end and see what's in it. In the meantime, International, or rather Incognita, can hack that. Yeah, at some point I'm going to use Burst, but I don't feel like now is the time. Alright. Hoping no guards come through this door. Oh, another camera. Don't need to use Burst yet. We'll probably need to use it soon. Because we're running low on power. Alright, no guards. That's good. Yeah, this guy's going to wake up in two turns. And when he does, the security level is going to go up. Go out. Close the door, because you're a gentleman. Run over here. Peek. Oh, that's another console. And what looks like a manufacturing area? Nah, that's taking a silly risk going in there. Some guard could just come through and see me immediately. If you get made, if, like if a guard sees you, you're pretty much screwed. Peek. Okay, there's literally nothing here. And I looked at all these other places, so... We'll have her run this way. Check out this nanofabricator. Yeah, the, these little red areas, these are where guards come from at the higher alarm levels. Hopefully, we will not get to see that. Run over to that vending machine, I believe it was. Peek one more time, make sure there are no guards. Yeah, what I learned from the last failed attempt is you can never be too cautious. Can I not even, oh, this entire thing is impassable. Oh yeah, and you can alt to do tactical views so you can see where, where objects are so that you know what is and what isn't passable terrain. Actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll run him up there, I'll peek. Man, I really want to explore this further. So I'm going to. Oh god. So he's awake now, so the security level advanced because he realized that somebody had to have knocked him out. Let's see what you can get from here. Ooh, I can get a better taser. I'm not sure what armor piercing is for. Titanium rods. Melee weapons deal plus one KO damage. I can also get 
A charge pack. Refills weapons, ammo, or reduces an item's cooldown, but it only has one use. These I can't do anything with because I need two speed. Reveals hidden daemons and identifies its type on a mainframe device. Okay, so daemons are some sort of computer program. Collects credits from consoles instead of power. 50 credit per PowerPoint. Those are really nice, but I can't afford them. One time use provides a dying agent. Stand next to a dead agent to use. That could be really good. I'm not sure about this KO stuff on the lady who hacks through walls. I'd give it to Ogden. Oh, wait. Not installed. Do I have to install it? Is there some separate thing I need to install it? Hmm. I feel like if an agent gets downed, I'm already going to be in a really bad situation. Sometimes the simplest things are the most effective. Metal bones let you hit things really hard. I didn't even read that. Plus one KO damage. Hmm. I have no idea how ephemeral or, like, easy to come by cash is, so I'm just gonna buy this. And I will put it in the inventory. Or I could install it on her. Hmm. Because I feel like I want to up her hacking. Nah, I'll, I'll just put it in the inventory. I can install it on somebody later. Or I can install it on Ogden later. I want I want trench coat over there to have it. Let's just go over there. And end of the turn. Looking around. Oh my god, I forgot to move him. Alright, all the firewalls are increased by one. Oh, I'm gonna need to toggle that generator on so he doesn't notice that anything suspicious. That laser gate's always been like that. Let's peek. Alright, my guess is there's a guard patrol that goes right through here. Let me see, can I get from here to there? So I can do one, two, three, four. And then peek and then ambush. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. Just in case there's something real fancy over here. Oh, and there is. It's a corporate safe. So I will ambush at this door. And then my next goal is to get International over to this guard and pin him. So I will set ambush there. Because when... When one of your dudes is standing on top of the guard, he can't, he can't wake up. I'm not sure if I said that, but it's true. All right. So I can give her his security card if I want to, but it's not worth anything if I give it to her. So what I will try to do is steal. Oh my God, this man just has med gel. He's so rich. I don't think... I don't think that, um... That him waking up again will raise the security level another time. But I kind of want to drag his body... I want to drag his body into... Yeah, because he has the level 1 security pass card, which I don't care about. I want to drag his body in here. Oh, right, she can hack that from far away. Alright, I'm going to try... Oh, this has two. So I can use the bursts now. So now you're going to see what Burst does. Burst gives me three power up front, and then it gives both of my agents three AP, 
but they'll lose 3 AP the next two turns. So what I need to do is hack the safe. Love it. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing it's an alarm or something. And then I want to drop the security guard and suddenly I have a ton more AP. So I will run her over there. Forget to close the door because I'm the best player of this game that has ever lived. And I will run him over there. Oh, this is the entire level. Let me make sure that I'm correct about this assessment. Yep, it's the entire level. So in that case, I will hijack this power because there's literally no reason not to. Oh wait, there's a door over here. I will capture this corporate safe. I will peek. Oh no, there's one more part. There's one more part, it's full of corporate safes. Oh my god, and this one has three? Also, there's a corporate safe over there I didn't even notice. Hmm. I'm not gonna be getting much more power, so I think it's actually time to cut my losses. I'm just gonna unlock this corporate safe, loot it, run him back, and close this door. Then I will end my turn. Yeah, because we don't get power any other way than either burst or hijacking consoles. So I don't think I'm going to have enough power to get this done while also avoiding the absolute nonsense that's about to happen to me. Ah, uh, you can't hijack it from that far away? That's unfortunate. I want to get International over here so she can steal this guy's med gel. I wonder if that goes into a communal storage, or if they just have it forever. Oh well, we're gonna find out. Can I actually, like, take from that? Okay, there we go. Uh, now I kind of want to. Is he in there? He's not in there. I feel like it's a death sentence, though. Considering that guard I left back there is going to wake up soon, I feel like it's a death sentence. I will move him to the other side of this door and end my turn. Okay, so now they can actually... Oh wait, no, they need one more turn to get their full allotment. I'm surprised they can't just move past each other. But alright. After you, miss. Okay, so I'm going to KO him again. Because I don't want him waking up and raising my suspicion. So I'll steal this med gel. And then I'll take trench coat, run him over here. In the turn. What happened? Yeah, him waking up from being unconscious again doesn't raise the uh, the suspicion level. I don't want to move him out there. What I'll probably do is leave this door open to see if he notices and try to knock him out. And away I go. Oh yeah. Oh wait, no, I can't give it to him because he still has the sight list. Yep, they brought in one more patrol. Oh, and it's the one in the worst place. I love that. She's just like, thing. She's like, oh no, a guy is coming. Evasion recommended. And I'm like, thanks. Oh, he's got his back turned. You'd think he would have learned by now, but he did not. 
You don't turn your back to me. Otherwise, I will put you in a sleeper hold. They still both have 4 AP, so I'm just going to try to get them out. Hopefully he doesn't move really far. Also, I don't know how this is cover. Hmm. There's a very visible human behind this mesh wall that's in the ramp that's in this room for some reason, but whatever. Who cares about that? Hey, you okay? Oh no. Oh no. Wait, I think I can move her. Oh, wait, he has his uh his personal cloaking thing. So I will use that. Actually, I want to rotate this tactical view. See if I can actually get round to this guy and destroy him. Nope, I can't. In that case... So, it renders him invisible until their next turn. So moving, I don't think, makes him... Makes him, um, visible. Damn it, they got away. Damn it, they got away. So I'm just gonna press space, toggle the generator off. Oh, sweet. I can juke it. Maybe. Let's try to move international. Ah, darn it, but that, that spot's noticed. So what I'll do is I'll move her up to try to get an ambush off. And then I'll take Decker, because his thing's on two turn cooldown. He's not going to be any help anyway. And I will run him over here. Thank God for your invisibility. Oh, yes. He got distracted by that guard who's been unconscious three times already. Thank you for your service. Get on the exit. I think he can escape right now, but I'm guessing if this is really as, as like XCOM as I think it is, that will just mean that he leaves her behind. Get in there, International. Everybody escape. Now to sift through the data and find the juiciest targets. Oh my god. We succeeded in a mission. I never would have believed it about an hour ago when that recording went horribly awry. Alright, so I... Let me see. So I gained... I stole 190. I gained 300. And then I spent 400. And then I missed two safes. And apparently there was another... Oh, there's another shop. I ran into a secondary server terminal in the last mission. That lets you get new programs. I really would have liked that. Okay, so that's all done. And I now have better net worth. Hooray. Power gained, power used, consoles. I got all the consoles. And I got titanium rods and Mengel. Now to see what actually happens after this. Oh no, you need credits to upgrade people. That's not good. Oh, but they have they have empty augment slots. I see. So you have just two augment slots in them. Can I can I give that to you? Ogden, can I give you the uh the titanium rods? Nope. Okay, fine. And can I upgrade you? No, apparently you just have multiple programs. Alright. In that case... Let's see what all these stats do. So... Speed just gives movement, just gives AP, until the last level. Hacking... Just gives additional power. Well, not just. That's really useful. 
Um, strength allows you to improve item carrying. And it's really cheap compared to all the other ones. Anarchy lets you steal from behind. You can pickpocket their ass. Steal 15% more credits from guards, steal 20% more credits from, from guards, steal increased chance to find items. Okay, so Anarchy also, also seems really good. Speed seems real good. I want to give them more strength. I feel like that's a worthwhile investment. Because it improves drag speed, and it allows them to carry one additional item for 300 credits. I'm not sure if that's cheap or not, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to give it to Decker, because he's going to be moving around a lot anyway. I've re-established contact with Monster. His network picked up the attack just before it hit us, and we're working to trace it back to the source. In the meantime... He's offered to sell us some of his more rarefied stock. Greetings. I don't often perform transactions face to face, but Gladstone is an old friend. I'll contact you when anything becomes available. Thank you. He Monster. has it too. If we find their central server, we may be able to bring them down, or at least distract them long enough that they lose our trail. Continue scavenging operations, and I'll keep you posted as more intel develops. They both have hello extra text here under their names. <laughs> oh, hello. So what is this? Upgrade agents. Okay, so I can do that at any time. Let's see what we have. We have Plastic Detention, Detention Center. Detention centers hold high value human assets for interrogation and deprogramming. They may be intercepted invisible agents on site. Oh, I could get a new person out of this. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look through all of these and decide which mission we're going to go on in the next episode. And then I'm going to call it an episode. So we've got... We're not sure who they're holding here, but intel shows they have high value. And maybe one of our missing agents, or a high value prisoner that may be sold for a tidy profit. Either way, guiding the prisoner out will yield large benefits to our cause. Okay, so I have the chance to get a new dude. And a new dude is infinitely valuable. They can be upgraded, they can have their own abilities. That seems really good. And then... Oh yeah, and they're each by a different company. Plastech Detention, Detention Center. Centers hold high no. Human assets no, I didn't mean it. And no, don't tell they me again. Be intercepted invisible I was wrong. Site. Okay, so, using cybernetic augmentation, they have modified their troops to meld with the mainframe. That sounds interesting. Then we have two of whatever this mission is. One by Plastec that's a two shield, and one by Senkaku that's a one shield. Also, it's really close by. Okay, so it's time management as well. Really? This one is six hours and this one is seven hours? Okay. The corporations are technically at war with each other, but reality is much more complex. Executives maintain extensive intercorporate connections as they defect back and forth, making their personal terminals very tempting targets. Okay, so that's that's literally the the mission we just did. I'm probably not doing that one. And then this one is K and O Chief Financial Suite. Looks like someone is trying to impress his boss by working through the night. Well, I can appreciate his work ethic. I'd appreciate his access codes even more. Let's schedule a meeting. Okay, so this is... Let me get more info. I want to make sure. The financial officer at this location holds passcodes for high-value items in other locations. Infiltrating here may yield greater rewards for future locations. Okay, so this vault access card for use in other facilities. Okay. And hack into his cranial security. All right, then. I don't know how regular vaults show up, but this, like, just the potential for an additional dude or some money, seems real good. It's, it's really far out of our way, but I'm probably going to go for it. It's either that one or this one, and I don't know what vaults are about. 
So we're going to go to the Plastech Detention Center in Algiers and try and figure out who this prisoner is. Hopefully it's a new person, because my guess is this is how you unlock people. Either that or rescuing the people from the contingency plan. Either way, we will do that next episode. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment with any tips or tricks that you might have. And I will see you next time.